welcome to Peace in the Land. On Peace in the Land, we talk about everything relating to Nigeria, religious, ethnic, everything that comprises of peace in this country, Nigeria. I have with me today an entrepreneur and a pastor. His name is Akiele Olumide, beloved Olagunju. A O B Olagunju. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. It's a pleasure. Yes, sir. So um, let me start by asking. Um, a lot of religious leaders today, pastors especially, are tilting or delving into politics. Um, what is your take on this? Is this is this right? Is this scriptural? Like, is this a way to go? Yeah. First and foremost, like I always say, that it's not about what you do, but how you do it and for what purpose you're doing it. If pastors are going into politics, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, we should understand from the scriptures, uh, Proverbs 29 verse 2, to be precise, says, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked rule, the people mourn. So there's nothing wrong for pastors to go into politics. And then why are pastors going into politics? That's another important question we need to answer. Is it because of the money bag? And thirdly, if pastors are going into politics, in the first place, what is their call? We have part-time pastors, we have full-time pastors. And the question is, are you a part-time pastor or are you a full-time pastor? If you're a full-time pastor, I am of the opinion that you should focus on your calling. You see, politics, is very demanding and pastoring is demanding for those who understand the assignment there is no how you can combine the two together if you're a full-time pastor i've been privileged to serve uh, up to the position of associate pastor in my own church and there was a time i had to resign from my job my my personal job then i was in abuja it was very demanding just to focus on my assignment as an associate pastor okay, let me let me cut you on that so after resigning now from your personal job to become a full-time associate pastor how were you able to meet uh, well I mean, you, you understand my question <laughs> for me that's not an issue i've always been an entrepreneur i've never picked up a job anywhere where i don't do my own personal business okay. so it was easy for me and at the same time, I just had a peace. I had a convention, you know, uh, as a child of God, when you're going into a venture, you should also understand what God is saying concerning it. Uh, some other persons might try it and blame themselves at the end. Okay. Um, okay, let me ask. Um, we have different denominations, different Christian denominations. And, um, you know, we generally, especially Pentecostals, we hear, oh, uh, you have to be born again, you have to be born again, you have to be there. And, you know, a lot of people wonder, what exactly does it mean to be born again? Oh, it is a very interesting question. Uh, before I go to that, let me just bring up this. I remember when we were growing up, those days they would ask you, are you a Christian? Once you say you are a Christian, you are good to go. And it got to a point, are you a Christian? You said yes. Are you a born again Christian? And then, now it's like, are you a Christian? Yes. Are you born again? Are you sure you're born again? Do you speak in tongues? And so many other things. It's just because of what the world has turned into. And somehow, in some places or in some situations, you can hardly differentiate between a born again Christian and the people of the world. And that's why it's important we understand this concept. It's a spiritual concept anyway of being born again. Uh, born again, which can also be referred to as new birth. According to Jesus in John chapter 3, verse 7, it talks about being born of the Spirit and the Word of God. Being born of the Spirit, it also means being engrafted into Christ for a new life experience altogether. So, being born again, you know, the Bible says that we are born of incorruptible seed, and that seed is Jesus Christ. So, you of Christ and this comes by the word it comes by the word of God without the word that's not possible okay um, let's go on a quick break All right.
right. We'll be right back. Stay with us. It's still peace in the land. Welcome back, it's still peace in the land, and I have with me AOB Olaguju, an entrepreneur and a pastor. So earlier, um, we talked about um, you asking, uh, okay, or people asking, are you born again? Are you a Christian? Then they're not going to ask, are you born again? Now they're not going to ask, well, like, do you speak? Are you filled with the Spirit? Do you speak in tongues? Now I want to talk about speaking in tongues. Is it, is it, is it mandatory for a for a Christian? Like when I'm saying a Christian, I'm talking about like. Christian, not the people that say they are Christian, but no, no, like real Christian. Is it mandatory for Christians to actually speak in tongues? Yeah, it's not mandatory. Okay. But then I would say it's important. Why is it important? Um, you see, speaking in tongues actually started on the day of Pentecost, according to Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Spirit descended on the apostles. And even the people around them were confused. Because they knew them and they were wondering the kind of language they were speaking. And some of them could even hear them speaking their own language. The Bible said they were speaking as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. But then, like I said, it's not compulsory. Like I always say, speaking in tongues is just like going to school and obtaining a certificate. Speaking in tongues in the Christendom is like a certificate. When the Bible said, when the Spirit comes upon you, what is it that you're going to have? It is power, not tongues. So, you know, it's possible you went to school and you acquired a certificate, but then did you acquire knowledge, I mean relevant knowledge, that you can put to work in the work field? So, speaking in tongues is not mandatory, but it's important. Like the Bible says in Jude, you speak in tongues, you build up yourself. And in Acts chapter 8, verse 26, uh, no matter how good you are in the prayer room, you'll be you get stuck at a point. Mm -hmm. But when you have you, when you can speak in tongues, that means you pass a button on to the Holy Spirit who now helps you. Every man naturally is weak, so we always need the help of the Holy Spirit. And you know, speaking in tongues in another way that's the language of the Spirit. And in First Corinthians chapter 14, the Bible says, When we speak in tongues, we speak mysteries and we communicate with God. So it's the easiest way to communicate with God. And also you edify yourself. There are times when you just feel weak, you just speak in tongues instead of speaking I'm weak. And before you know it, the Holy Spirit has taken over. All right, um, let, let's go to the responsibilities of Christians to their immediate environment. Um, what, what are the, what do you think? It might be your personal opinion, it might be your religious opinion. Are the, um, responsibilities of Christians to their immediate environment. Now I'm asking this question because um, I remember when I was in Ibadan, a particular church took it upon itself to actually um, tar a particular road. It was, a, was quite a distance. But you know, and then somebody was saying, well, it's part of the responsibilities of the church, you know, it's part of their civic responsibility to the environment that they are. So what do you think as Christians are our responsibilities to our immediate environment? I'll pick it up from there. Uh, that was exactly what the church was supposed to do. Tying the road is not uh, any big deal. I believe personally that the church should be at the forefront of corporate social responsibility. Anything value added responsibility. Like I always say, it's unfortunate that when you talk about the church sometimes some people can just think or reason beyond a particular building filled with some holy mm -hmm. fellows, uh, tongue filled and the rest of them. No. The Bible says we are the salt of the earth. We are not the salt of the church. Yeah. We are the light of the world. Not the, light. the church already has enough light. So you have to move out. We have to spread out from the church environment. Not just to gather every Sunday or weekdays. And add values. And when you're talking about values, this cut across education, health, and the rest of them. It's not just evangelism, no. That's a major assignment given to every one of us. But we're talking about responsibilities. What actually shows the value of Christ in us? Okay, um, let, me, let me ask one last question. I'm looking at um, this crisis in uh, up north, like all those Kaduna and, and all those kind of things. What do you think 
in maybe your opinion is the solution so to say to religious crisis generally but in a simple word i would say we need to change our language yes we need to change our language uh, i remember those days uh, history storytelling used to be very interesting but i don't know for several reasons the dimension is changing by the time you have a child that is growing up now i'm talking about the family now you have a child growing up and you have parents uncles telling them ah you know the hebrews are very greedy with money or you said the northerners are this the uh, westerners you know they love parties you're already creating an impression mm -hmm. and unfortunately if care is not taken each time you meet an Igbo man you say this man i can't do business with him and the same thing with crisis, I, you, we need to change our language. That starts with the family. Parents should mind what they tell their children. They are the first role model. And this moves on to the religious leaders. We should be mindful of what we preach to our congregation. So, sorry, you're indirectly saying religious crisis is, um, is interwoven with um, ethnic with ethnicity. So yes, so. yes, it is. Like, I don't want to they have to dip into what's happening to me in Nigeria presently. It's not very interesting. But then if you look at it, today you hear communal crisis. This, today you hear uh, ex-men and farmers and some people tell us, no, it's not like that. It's one-sided battle and the rest of them. And before you know it, they tell you this tribe, you don't deal with them. They are terrible. And you see, it goes on. And a uh, few days ago, I read in the news uh, where the governor of Cardinal State was talking about someone made a statement and that led to a reprisal from the other side. So we should be mindful of this. And the third party I actually wanted to mention is the political class. Okay. Because there's another way, because most of them, for their own selfish interest, they also try to divide us along the religious line. Yeah, okay, well, let's just leave it there. Uh, thank you very much, sir. It was really, really nice having you. It's a pleasure. Um, join us next time on Peace in the Land. I am Muyo Lanier.